Yeah, so systemic retinoids are widely used, and one of the concerns has been for retinoid bone toxicity. And retinoid bone toxicity with extensive use comes in three different sorts. So the first that we've been concerned about is premature closure of the epiphyses. Um, there have only been a few reports of this occurring. Um, it's generally occurred where individuals have been treated for uh, many years, so for long-term therapy, and treated at very high doses, doses, doses that are two or three times as high as we generally would use for the treatment of uh, cystic acne. The other concern with bone toxicity for chronic retinoid exposure uh, is uh, the disorder we call DISH, or Diffuse Idiopathic Skeletal Hyperostosis. So this is a disorder that occurs in tendons and ligaments around joints. It's very common even in the general population. So by the time individuals are uh, 40 years old, most of us have some degree of this. Um, most of the time it's asymptomatic, but in individuals uh, who are going to be on therapy for a long period of time, it's easily monitored, uh, and generally they do very well with it. The third uh, concern that people have had, and this has been a more recent one, has been in demineralization or osteopenia. Um, so osteopenia can occur from uh, many different risk factors. Uh, the studies that have been done where it's been associated with retinoids um, have in general not shown an association. Um, and so the uh, evidence for this is really very small. Uh, and generally if you have an individual who has a history of osteopenia or a family history of osteopenia or of fractures or happens to be on another drug or have other risk factors, then a DEXA scan is easy to obtain, uh, it has minimal uh, exposure to radiation, uh, and it's, it's a good source. Uh, to have as a baseline uh, for that type of patient. In addition, you want to have those patients who may have a family history of osteopenia be sure that their uh, vitamin D supplementation is adequate and calcium levels uh, and that they're generally active uh, and doing the sorts of things that uh, with a healthy lifestyle prevents uh, bone demineralization. Any other considerations and risk factors? So um, the, re the real issue here is that you want to understand what your patient's concerns are. Um, if they have a family history or a personal history of uh, bone issues, you want to be aware of that um, and then take the appropriate precautions. Um, in individuals who are going to be treated for long-term therapy, perhaps for disorders of cornification, um, for them it may be useful to get a bone survey at periodic uh, intervals, but that again depends on the uh, amount of drug the patients have had and the duration of treatment. Any other tips for treating these patients? Um, sometimes with the treatment of acne, uh, there are younger patients who, who have not reached full height, uh, and often uh, uh, the family is particularly concerned uh, about their growth rate, wants to be sure they attain full growth rate, uh, and they may not have had epiphyseal closure yet. Um, it is known that um, acne responds very well even to low doses of isotretinoin. The problem is that it tends to relapse a few years down the line. So in that situation, one might think about using a lower dose, uh, but uh, explaining to the family that they may, the patient may need to be treated once they reach their full uh, their full height and the epiphyses are normally closed. For IMNG Medical Media, I'm Heidi Spleet.